choices when buying a laptop. Look who I have here. Oh my gosh, lucky running into you. Good to see you. Especially considering we came here together. Right here with all the laptops. We're here to talk about what are the right questions to ask when you're going laptop shopping because it can be so overwhelming. There are a lot of choices out there. There are a lot of choices. There's Windows 7 now, Snow Leopard is also new. So what are the things that you need to ask yourself first and foremost when well, you I go laptop I think the number shopping? one question you're going to ask yourself when you're buying a new laptop is what am I going to use this laptop for? Am I going to carry around every day or am I going to leave it anchored to like my desk in my house or in my office? Now if you're not going to take it around with you, then you want a bigger laptop, a 15 inch or maybe even a 17 inch. If you're going to carry it around every day, you want something small like a netbook or an ultra portable. And if you're kind of in the middle, maybe you'll leave it at home a couple of days or you use it all the time, all day long, and you'll carry it around, then the 13 inches is the one size that's kind of right in the middle there, good for travel and good for using all day long. So, what's the deal with Windows 7? Every machine here is running it. Well, now Windows 7 is out, so any new laptop you're going to buy that's a PC is probably going to have Windows 7 on it, which is great, especially because Windows 7 scales really well. It works on low power systems like netbooks where Vista really didn't. Are there any specifics we should look for when it comes to specs? Because that can be confusing. I can see it listed all around here. Yeah, a lot of laptops are kind of commodity items and that the specs inside are mostly the same, but you want to look for probably a dual core CPU. Uh, Intel's Core 2 Duo is the most popular. Uh, you want two gigs of RAM if you're going to be running Windows 7. Uh, one gig of RAM, if you have a netbook, you can get away with that. And obviously a 160 gig or larger hard drive. Uh, anything bigger than a netbook is probably going to have a 250 gig hard drive. And for wireless, uh, you want 802.11 and Wi-Fi. And what about price? How much should I really expect to spend? Well, that's the best thing about laptops is that prices have really come down in the last year or two. Uh, with netbooks, you can start at $299, maybe go up to $399, a little bit more if you want special features like a higher resolution screen. Uh, regular 15 and 14 inch uh, mainstream laptops, really seven to $900. You're going to find a lot of good stuff in there. If you're going super premium, $999 or above, you're either getting a MacBook or you're getting a big, massive 17 inch desktop replacement with a lot of gaming horsepower. So if the netbooks are so cheap, can I get away with that being my main computer? Well, for a lot of people, netbooks are a great option. They may not always be your only computer. They're more of a secondary or companion machine to a system you already have. Maybe instead of buying a new computer, you get a netbook to go along with it. Because they have generally small screens, small keyboards. Uh, they're not super powerful. They're good for surfing the web, for email, maybe for working on Word documents, playing back some music. That's probably about it. As long as you keep your expectations modest, you should be pretty happy with a netbook. Okay, and what about sturdiness? I want something that kind of can bang around in my bag a little bit. What's the best material to look for? Plastic? Obviously, a lot of laptops are made out of plastic. Some of the more expensive ones are made out of aluminum or a magnesium alloy, and there are even some kind of rugged laptops that have sort of rubberized coatings on them. Those are a little bit more obscure. Okay, and I have to ask the partisan question, Mac or PC? You know, some people like Macs, some people like PCs. If you want something that's not uh, uh, super budget, if you're willing to spend a thousand dollars or more, a lot of people in that category definitely go for the MacBooks. And it feels like these retailers, they try and upsell you on the warranty. Do we need it? Well, an extended warranty is one of those things we generally invite people not to buy. Laptops are almost a little bit of a different case because there's really no user serviceable parts inside. You don't want to be cracking this thing open like you could with the desktop and trying to fix it yourself. Uh, a good thing to do is look into an extended warranty from the PC maker that actually makes the system because they're the ones that would be repairing it. So what are your recommendations this holiday season then? Well, there are a couple laptops I'm really liking a lot right now. This is the HP Mini 311. It's a netbook, but it's a bigger netbook with an 11-inch screen. And it's also got this new NVIDIA Ion graphics chip that lets you play high-definition video and do a little bit of very mild gaming on it. And the nice thing about it is they didn't raise the price. It's still $399, wow. even with the new graphics and the bigger high-def screen. So obviously, everybody loves MacBooks, and Apple just updated their basic plastic 999 MacBook. Instead of making it cheaper, what they did was they made it a little bit nicer, kept it at 999. So now it's got that unibody construction like you find in the MacBook Pro. So it's got the big touchpad, and uh, it's got an LED backlit display, uh, which is a little uh, nicer, used a little bit less power, a little bit better for the environment. And obviously, it's a tiny bit lighter, tiny bit thinner. If you're looking to uh, get a MacBook, you don't want to spend more than $1,000, $999 right there. Okay, you like those two. What else? Well, if you like something that's kind of like a MacBook, but you don't want to spend that much, there are a whole bunch of really thin 13-inch laptops out right now, like the Toshiba T135, uh, six to $700, depending on the configuration. One thing to look out for in this, make sure you get the kind with the dual-core CPU, not the single-core. Well, thank you so much for making this a bit less confusing. And if you want to make sure your laptop buying experience is less confusing, make sure you do your homework before you get to the store. Go to CNET.com, read the reviews, watch our videos. It'll make the experience a lot less painful. Happy holiday shopping. I'm Natalie Del Conti with CNET.com. Watch all of your favorite live streaming CNET shows at CNET Live.
You'll find a schedule of what's showing next, and you can chat live with the hosts and other listeners during the show. CNET Live at CNET.com slash live.